Aaron Dykes, I appreciate you coming in on Sunday because I hadn't talked to you since I sent you Thursday to cover the uh, martial law drill uh, there in Florida. Tell us, tell us exactly what you and Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News uh, witnessed out there. Well, we got back yesterday, Alex, and the exercise took place mostly on Friday starting around 5 a.m. And they said they took more than 18 months putting this together. I never saw the full budget, but it was Homeland Security grants, so our money. And they were just frothing all around the city, shutting down everything, using all these facilities. And they had four public facilities where the media was sort of invited, but then they still freaked out and interrogated us at almost every location. Then they had... Well, you're the enemy. You're the American people. They work for foreign banks. Then they had other secret locations, including the sports stadium. And when we showed up there, they really got weird. And tell us why they got weird. They didn't want you seeing the children. Yeah, because they were doing a relocation drill, taking the children to the sports stadium. And, you know, that would be from all the Denver public schools and then have the parents pick them up afterwards. They did a FEMA drill using fake parents to pick up uh, some real children. And again, why is FEMA involved with people's kids? A, saw how great they did with the Superdome uh, in New Orleans. And B, we've got the documents a decade ago. This is just training for the cops to take political dissidents to sports stadiums and to make the parents come turn their guns in to get their kids. Well, yeah, if you use the pretext that it's keeping them safe from a school shooter, then it sounds nice and happy to bring them to the stadium. But, yeah, it could be anything. Well, we happen to know from the clergy response teams and others, it is about political dissidents. And when the parents come, you check their ID and, oh, we need to take you in for questioning. Disappear. Right. But when we tried to check out the story and find out what they meant by testing student teacher processing activities at Mile High Stadium, which has been renamed a few times over the years, they wouldn't let us in. They wouldn't tell us anything. Then finally, after like an hour of waiting, finally they sent out the Denver Police uh, Victims Unit guy to talk to us. And they're kind of like, oh, you stayed too long at the elementary school drill earlier. There's nothing to see here. But yes, it is our goal to bring all children to the sports stadium in this drill or any real event. Aaron, what did you think of the um, school you went to that had the first graders with cops aiming guns at them? It was surreal, to say the least. I mean, of course, if there really was a school shooter, it makes sense to bring in the cops. But what are they really using the SWAT teams for? Uh, to knock up people's homes, growing gardens, and the rest of it, right? Well, in the old days, if there was a school shooter, the, the first cop in just ran in, drove his car up, Jumped in, ran in, and shot the guy like with the UT tower shooter. They didn't play games. Now, in every case, they wait like four hours yeah. and just sit there, and they tell everybody, get in the classroom, bow down, so we get a higher death toll. It's actual training. Instead of, like, evacuate, get out, it's like, wait for the shooter, suck their boots when they come in. The cops will be there in four hours. Of course, usually it's the feds inside shooting the kids. That's why they've got to have the drill to make sure the other cops stay outside while they finish the work inside. Yeah, it's really sad, and they had all the tables turned. So, yeah, it was a scenario where the shooter had been there for a while before the SWAT team showed up. By the way, I don't want to just make that statement, Aaron. Uh, I had the Rocky Mountain News reporter on about 10 years ago or nine years ago about this, and it's now defunct Rocky Mountain News, big, big, a big second biggest paper in Colorado. It, there were court cases and lawsuits, and it came out in court that the, that the SWAT teams actually shot some of the kids at Columbine. And there were other shooters inside and 127 bombs at CBS News. So I'm not just saying that. Sorry, Aaron, go ahead. Yeah, it's upsetting. But uh, as far as the drill we witnessed on Friday, uh, who was playing the terrorist? It looked like a returning veteran to me, Alex. He was in the fatigues with the shooter gloves, and it didn't look well, like... Well, we have all the training manuals. It's always a returning veteran. Veterans are the number one threat. Homeland Security admits that. So everything Homeland Security has been warning about and propagandizing about for a year and a half or so, or probably longer, a year and a half that I'm directly aware of, they were playing out... In one way or another, in this drill that involved more than 100 agencies. Well, when we got the documents three years ago from uh, good uh, cops, sent it to us, where they said gun owners, conservatives, returning veterans are the enemy of America, Homeland Security came out and said, yeah, that is who we train to fight. And they put al-Qaeda in Libya. They're good. Al-Qaeda is good. But George Washington is bad. And I actually have FEMA saying George Washington is bad in my film, Road to Tyranny. I have them training cops that George Washington is bad. And Ron Paul, by the way. Yeah. And this is not satire, if you're a new listener. These are foreign banks that are destroying America. Of course they hate real Americans. But while they're prepping all the security with the mobile vans and everything and the NFL pat-downs, is it any wonder they're doing scenarios with malls, with shopping centers, with sports? Well, they admit now TSAs is going to be in those, so they got to get you ready for the next staged event there. It's all a big rollout, Aaron. Yeah, and so we just saw a piece of that here on Friday. I know on InfoWars Nightly News, weeknight 7 o'clock, you're going to have a big report 
for us tomorrow. More footage at 7 o'clock tomorrow, Central, 8 o'clock um, Eastern, prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com. I'm going to come back with more.